Wing Man Act. Peter, you haven't eaten one mouthful of breakfast. Now drink up your milk before you're late for school. But I just started training. Bet I could go longer than him without eating. Especially milk. Don't argue with your mother, Peter. Suppose you start training on getting better marks at school. Yes, sir. Morning, darling. Beautiful as ever. Good. Now, no nonsense if you want your best pants pressed. Yes, mother dear. There's a boy at school eats goldfish. He does? Well, never you mind. But he does. I thought I told you to stick to your school books. Here. Run on now, you'll be late. And kiss your mother goodbye. Oh, all right. Wish I was a starving man. Peter. What harm is there to let him look through it, pal? Maybe you don't know, but he's pretty proud of you. I know. I'm happy that he is. But I want him to live on what he learns from books, not his wits. I don't want him outside the world, always looking in. I don't want him to be an outsider. Oh, well, if you have to go around feeling sorry for yourself, at least put your best pants on. And don't you ever forget one thing. We both love you. You both think you're something pretty special. Jenny, I... Now get dressed and find out what Tony Lewis wants to see you about. It's not everybody who has a bookmaker for an old friend. He might even give you a tip for a sure winner. Then you could rent that place you found for your starving man to starve in. I know. And he'd tell me he was tired of his bookmaking business and turned the whole thing over to me. Better pack your clothes, honey. We're going on a trip around the world. Pell, I'm serious. Your luck is going to change. It will. I know it will. Why am I such a lucky guy? I don't care if you've got ten X watch to support. That's your headache. If your horse had won, you'd have been up here like a streak of lightning to collect. Happy Johnson wants to know whether you recover a thousand feet on weight. 330 Epson. Governor says you're unhappy. You made a bet and lost, and I expect to get paid. Fix a couple of drinks, pal. Sure, Tony. Whiskey. Well, borrow it from one of your ex-wives, your future wife. Whoever's stuck with you now, I don't care. You get that money up here by tonight. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, happy high income tax. Treasury loves me with all the loyalty of an out-of-work relative. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Well, it takes very little to make people happy these days, only money. How's Jenny? Fine. The boy? Fine. Well, I'm fine, too. So is the weather. Look, Tony, you didn't call me over here to ask me all this. What's really on your mind? Harry, close him. I got troubles, pal. And you're still the only one I can trust. Tony Lewis, Esquire. Darling Tony, I must see you. It's very important. Believe me, it's for your own good. Dolores, it's a pretty name. It smells pretty, too. Mm, like poison. That one's meek and mild, but the others put the bite on and bit so hard I need a transfusion. Why don't you send her off to some nice quiet place in the country for a long vacation? Because good old Tony is the softest touch in the business, a regular charity institution. And sweet little Dolores has got me right by the bank account. And does she know it? Funny. I used to think she was a nice kid. I even liked her. I could stop it. I've handled her kind before. But I'm going to get married, pal. What? Tony Lewis getting married? Well, good, I didn't know. Perhaps I'm climbing into a class over my head marrying Susan. I don't know. I never thought I'd ever get to meet a girl like her, much less marry her. I dare not go to the police and yell blackmail. I might lose her. Maybe you're right. To think that I was mug enough to fall for the oldest gag in the world. Well, you're a big business now, Tony. Lots of people may want to get their hands in your pockets. For Victoria Court. 
She must have just moved there. Well, I go there a lot. I have a friend that lives there. Maybe he knows this Dolores girl. Look, I'll go there and have a talk with her. If she really needs the money, pal, I'll let you know. Okay. That's what friends are for. Thanks. What are you doing now? I've got the greatest act I ever had. Found the best spot in London to open in. Only no money to open with. Relax, pal. I know the signs. Is it a good bet? Look, if I had 300 of my own, I'd risk 200 of it. That's good enough for me. Make out a check, Pell Pell, 250. 250? 50 extra working expenses. Gives me a better chance of getting my money back. Why don't you give up the freaks and one night stands and come in with me? We had some good years together, remember? Fresh hair cut every week. Suits pressed all the time. I like being my own boss, Tony. I like freaks. I'll pay you back for this, Tony. Sure, pal. Thanks. Thanks again, Tony. to the order of Pell Pelham, 250 pounds. Signed, sealed, and delivered, Tony Lewis. Not bad. Good old Pell. Fell in and came up smelling just like money. What is it this time? Alone? Pay off? Rock, you're so used to your nose being buried in dirt, fresh air would kill you. Quite a sense of humor. You will not find anywhere that has the character, the tradition, Bert. What fantastic beggar's figure all this can be had. No. No? I don't want to buy. You don't want to buy? No, I want to rent. You want to rent? And then I want to build. Build? Exactly. Exactly what? A tent. A tent? Yes, and inside that tent, a tomb. A huge glass tomb. Ah, uh, don't say it, friend. I know what you're thinking. But inside that tomb is a man, a man of flesh and blood like you and me. But that man is going to starve. Why? Right here on this very spot, he will begin an attempt to smash his own mighty world record for starvation. Henri Sapolio, world champion starving man. 50 days in Paris, 55 days in Berlin, 60 days in Copenhagen, 65 days in Los Angeles. And right here on this very spot, he will attempt to starve for 70 whole days. Think of it, my friend. 1,680 hours, day and night. Why, there'll be such a path beat across these stones and rubble, the weeds will be trampled flat, and no price will be too great for its possession. Yes, I... Friend, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut you in on this little deal with me. I'm going to make you my partner. Oh, I... I... Oh, of course, I, I could offer you the money, but... Well, that would only insult you. Partner, how does this sound? This land donated through the generosity and great humanitarian heart of Rutland and Company. Well, I... Uh... No, I insist the honor be yours. Why, I might even let you help me clear away some of the rubble. Oh, but that would be overstepping the bounds of partnership. But then there's the matter of putting up the tent. They have a big tent up there with a huge sign reading, Pell Pellum presents Henry Sapolio, world champion starving man. Shoot! Shoot! Let me be shoot! Oh, what is so wrong with soup? Well, there's nothing wrong with shoot. But shoot on Monday, shoot on Tuesday, shoot on Wednesday, shoot on every day. That's it's all right when I'm working that I starve to make a living. But but I'm not working. How do you expect me to live when I, when you make me starve, huh? Do you think she put any money away to rent a place, any place, so that I could go back to work, huh? No, no. Save, save. Who can save when always the stomach comes first? And who spends all the money on food? Food? And who drinks all the money in wine? Wine he must drink. And always the best years. And while I'm locked away inside my tomb, fighting off the pangs of hunger, where do you think my wife is? In the kitchen, what do you think she's doing? Well, I tell you, she's cooking, boiling away all my hard-earned money to feed the empty stomachs of some empty pocketed people I've been know while I starve to death. You see, you see what I am married to. I am a nervous wreck. You are a nervous wreck. I'm a nervous wreck. What do you think? I am a nervous wreck. I'm a... Oh. 
Oh, is this real? Is this good? It's good anywhere in the world. Oh, Mama! Papa! We are starving again. Oh, what a luxury! And with dignity. Oh. Pell, a beautiful Pell. We love you. How, how did you do it? I just have to know the right friend. Oh, this is marvelous. We start right away. I'll get everything ready. The tomb, advanced publicity, the posters, everything. We open as soon as we can. This will keep the wolf happy until then. We'll have a party. We, we, we'll celebrate tomorrow I, night. I will take care of the money. Miss Lamar? Rena. Rena Maroney. Hello, Belle. How did you find me? You write a very convincing letter. Tony's an old friend of mine. I like your own name better. When you try to hide, you change a lot of things. Why don't you invite me in and we'll talk about it. Rena, this isn't like you. What's the trouble? And blackmail, why are you doing this? Why? Why anything? Why fall in love? Why get hurt? Why run away when you know running doesn't help? And when you do stop running, you're so tired. You're so beat. You stop thinking. You don't care. You find yourself doing things you can't stop. Like Tony Lewis, maybe? Like Tony Lewis, maybe. I didn't want to write those letters, Pell. I couldn't help myself. Somebody make you write this? Just tell Tony he shouldn't worry anymore. That's why I wanted to see him, to tell him myself. I'll phone him. It'll give him a good night's rest. Does your father know about all this? No, he's up north with the show. How's he doing? I haven't heard. It's a great show, Maroney's Circus. Your dad gave me my first job. What'd you do, have a fight and run away? I've been crazy, pal. Listen, Rena, I'm starting a new show in a few days with Sapolio, a starving man act. After it gets going, I'll go up north and talk to your father, soften things up a bit. The Sapolios live in the flat right under yours. We're having a little party tonight to kind of celebrate. Why don't you come down after a while? Come on. What do you say? All right. Good. I'll see you later. Henri, haven't you gone yet? Hurry, any minute they will be here. Always he is forgetting something. Olives. Well, go get them. someone down to join us, an old friend of mine. She lives upstairs. I hope you don't mind. Pop Maroney's daughter. She is Papa Maroney's daughter? Yeah. It's a long story. I'm through with you and everything, everything about you. Don't try and stop me, Harry. It won't do any good. You try and stop me and I'll tell them. I wouldn't be very grateful of you. No, Harry, please. I'll tell them, Harry. I'll... No, oh, please. I'll never... Oh, have another drink, sir. No, Andre. If he has more than one, he gets indigestion. He gets so sick, he can't swallow the needles and razor blades. You can't even look at broken glass, can you, Cyril? That's right, dear. Sorry, Cyril. Uh, 
<laughs> Sip it slowly, little man. You haven't got the fullness of Sapolio. <laughs> Four weeks from now, I will taunt you, eating chocolate bars outside your tomb. Then we shall see who has the fullness. <laughs> <laughs> That Ivan, he's the happiest Russian I've ever met. Oh, he is a big baby. Hello, come here. Hi, everybody. Oh, Bella, darling. Sorry, Wesley. Well, Bertie, glad you could come. Bertie here got carried away carving out a brand new stencil for me. It's exquisite. An inspiration. Show them, Bella. Sure. Oh, not that one. Show them the butterfly. Ooh. An exact reproduction. My first in pastel. Show them the wings, Bella. <laughs> I spent four hours on just the wings. Six? I ought to know. You dragged me out to the country to get closer to nature. Wouldn't even let me wear gloves. <laughs> Why not have Bella tattooed once and for all and be done with it? Don't go putting ideas into his head. It's one thing being married to Bertie. But tattooed on top of it? Uh-uh, I pass. Only a trained hand or an expert eye could tell the difference. Like that serpent. <laughs> Straight from the Garden of Eden. Well, well, well. Just in time for the floor show. Nice little collection you've gathered here, pal. It was. Just thought I'd drop by and take a look at things. See there isn't any scandal or anything, you know. After all, it's what the uh, circus and carnival owners league pay me for. One of you freaks steps out of line, gets into trouble, stand for business. Just doing my job, you know. Why don't you drop dead? Oh, forget it, Mick. Even his own mother says she's got no children. Play something hard, hmm? Come on, right in. Look, look who I've found, everybody. Come on, come on. Oh, Mr. Stanton. Oh, nice <laughs> Harry, darling. Oh. Henri, you're a lucky chap. <laughs> oh, my contribution. Oh, Mr. Stanton, thank you very much. Thank it's you. Nothing, nothing at all. Good luck, everybody. Hello, Bella. Dear Uncle Harry, great white father of show business, Christopher Columbus of talent. <laughs> you call me next week, Bella. There's a part in a musical you could do, a dancer. A real part, Harry? Oh, how wonderful. <laughs> da -da 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 <laughs> a tattoo dancer. Hello, Mick. I got a great spot coming up for you soon, Mick. <laughs> well, it, it, it's upstairs, little man. <laughs> Here. Hello, Mr. Stanton. All right. Don't tell me they invited you to this party. I'm doing my job, Mr. Stanton. Well, Mr. Stanton, I, I never... It, it... You never what? Because you didn't invite me to your party, you never expected me to show up. Oh, no, Mr. Stanton. It's, it isn't that. It, it is just that I thought you, you would... You didn't think I'd accept. You think I'm too important. But don't worry, these people are my friends. Anyway, do you think I'd let you and Pell open without coming to wish you luck? Not Harry Stanton. We shall drink to that. Harry, nice of you to come. I'm sorry we just forgot to ask you. Oh, that's all right, Pell. I hope you do it this time. You know I think you're the best in the business. I could build a whole show around you. 
Keep you working 52 weeks a year. I hate to have to make you the richest agent in show business, Harry. Well, my door's open to you at any time, you know that. Don't you ever get tired listening to other people's troubles? I got broad shoulders. Remember that time you woke me up in the middle of the night? Three o'clock. A loving yeah. cup, and you shall be the first to drink it. Come on, everybody. Even you, Mr. Rourke. First, I'd like to drink to my old friend, Henri Sepulio. A man who makes me feel proud to be one of you. Proud to be part of this great little world of show business. To you, Henri, I say good health, long life, and many great stars. <laughs> Upstairs. Don't touch anything up there! Who is she? A girl. She lives upstairs. Murder, murder, murder. A sad business, but it's a living. Come on, boys, as soon as you wrap it up, get everything over to my office. Let's go. Got any angles, sir? Well, let's see what Mr. Lewis, the bookmaker, has to say about that letter. Maybe she lost a bet. Maybe it was the other way around. Somebody paid her off, that's for sure. Well, one of you might as well talk now as later. That dame felt like she'd been dead at least two hours when the midget fell over her. With that party going on down here, any one of these nature's wonders could have gone upstairs and knocked her off. That's what I think. Mr. Rourke, isn't it? You know, if you do all the thinking, I'd be out of a job. Mr. Stanton, would you mind, please? Certainly, Sergeant. Many more to go, Sergeant. Only Mr. Stanton and Mr. Sapolio, sir. Well, you're free to go now, but we may want to talk to you again. Seems like it was a nice party. Too bad. Anybody like a lift? How about you, Mr. Pelham? You asking me or telling me? Well, how would you like it to be? In that case, I'll just say my goodbyes. Marie? Pelham. You must not go, Inspector, until you've tried one of my kicks. Oh, that's very kind. Pelham. When I was going for the olives, I saw someone at her door. She let him in. Who was it? Well, I, I'm not sure it... I'm not sure it was so dark. Henri, don't say anything, not just yet. You saw nobody understand. Well, you know something. Maybe I do, but I need a little time. Will you do it? Just don't say anything. Henri, I didn't do it. I didn't kill her. You must take another. They're All right. I saw nobody. I must get the recipe sometime for my wife. Freddy? Uh, some little cakes for Peter. Thanks, Marie. You've put on a little weight since I saw you last. Marriage must agree with you. Everybody at that party must have known her. Some a little better than others, maybe, huh? Oh, come off it, man. A girl was murdered tonight, one of your own kind, your own people. Doesn't that mean something to you? You'll have me crying in a minute. I did cry myself once, about a year ago. And they broke into a flat the other side of town and found another girl like this one. Nobody even knew who she was, where she came from. I almost did. But I got there too late. Maybe if I'd got there 30 seconds sooner, Raina Maroney wouldn't have been carried away on that stretcher tonight. Quite a story. When do I applaud? No, don't applaud. You've got your world and you want to be square with it. I don't condemn you for that. But you go places I don't. You hear things I can't. You get to know a lot of people. They talk in front of you. Look, Lindy, you do your job, I'll do mine. I could never do your job because I'd always be for the underdog. That can be a dangerous dog sometimes.
Pell? Did you have a good party? It's a wonderful party. Well, Marie gave me some cookies for Peter. Hello, Marie. Thanks. You go back to sleep, dear. Good night, Pell. I love you. Tony, Pell. Pell, did you... I'd like to ask you a question. Have you been to Victoria Court since I saw you last? No. You said you were going... Another question. Where were you tonight? I've been calling. I was out for the evening. Why? Alone. What's all this about? You better get yourself some answers, Tony. Not from me, for the police. They'll be around soon. What's all this got to do with me? In case you don't know, I'll tell you. She's dead. She was murdered tonight. Pelham, I want to ask you... Uh, hello, partner. Mr. Pelham! Mr. Pelham! Mr. Pelham! Well, George, you got your suit out of pawn. Uh, Mr. Pelham, I thought I'd better get set up now. You just have no idea how many people have come by and wanted to know what was going on. You told them, of course. Oh, but of course. A couple of them were real cute. Some asset. She ought to sell plenty of tickets. How's her husband doing at the hospital? He really got himself chewed up this time. You know what he's lying there worrying about? His tigers. Thinks they'll forget him. Fancy worrying about tigers. <laughs> hey, George, you know about the doctor bit, what time to come on oh, and everything. Of course. Yeah, and another thing. Don't say it. Not a drop. Not a single drop. Hey, Conway. Put a speaker up there. And... Real cozy layout you've got here, pal. We don't open till tonight, Rourke. You can buy yourself a ticket then if you want to. Right now, I'm busy. Well, Pearl, that's no way to talk to a friend who's just dropped by to do you a favor. I remember your favors from the old days, Rourke. Uh, you got me wrong, Pelly boy. I just wanted to tip you off. I've been hearing a few rumbles around town. The boys down at the station are mulling over a few queer ideas. You know? Such as how your old friend Tony Lewis was holding hands with Rena Maroney. Such as how he had a little trouble brushing her off. Wasn't it odd the way I ran into you that day? You know, when you were coming out of Tony Lewis's office with that check in your hand. It's a lot of rubbish, isn't it? But when those boys get stuck on a case, they're liable to dream up anything. Now that's settled, I'll come to the point. I'm worried, Harry. Had a bad case of insomnia last night. Up all night worrying. About you. You made a bad mistake, Harry. I can't understand how you could do it. I could cover for you when it was something simple, like the time with that girl who... <laughs> you remember about the girl. What are you trying to say, Rock? There's just some fun that can't be covered, Harry. That can't be fixed. You've got an evil man, Rob. No, oh, be realistic, Harry. At your age, the rates for life insurance go up. Meaning what? Meaning last night and Rena Maroney. Meaning I'm not getting any younger. 
and I'm thinking of retiring. You'd better get some sleep tonight, Rob. Oh, of course, nobody can prove anything. You've even got a beautiful alibi. She was dead at least two hours before you joined the party. Doesn't make you a very likely suspect, does it? How lucky can you get? Of course, I'm only guessing. But I think it must have been very lonely for you sitting up in that room all that time. With her so cold and so dead. But some things I don't have to guess about. Like how a man plays Santa Claus to a pretty young girl. I thought you'd understand. Relax, Harry. The way I figure it, you're right at the bottom of the list. Last. Now, if it had been you, Harry, standing where I was, I would have pushed. Bye, Harry. Opening tonight, Ari Sapolio, world's greatest starving man. You will not eat for 70 whole days. World's champion fasting man, locked up in a glass tomb. What are you doing? <laughs> Opening tonight, Ari Sapolio. Come and see the Ari. Greatest, the most dramatic, the most startling event ever to take place. Opening it will be my privilege to bring you face to face with the greatest attraction in the history of show business. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, nailed up in a glass tomb, the cynosure of all eyes. You all know Webster says that sinecure means the center of attraction, the main event, the thing watched. In this case, that means Sapolio, unable to escape, unable to make a single move without being watched, making each and every one of you the sole judge of whether or not he'll carry out his grim task to the final end. But I advise you not to wait, ladies and gentlemen. Get your tickets now. Be among the lucky ones who will have the privilege and the thrill of meeting Sapolio, talking to him, shaking hands with him before he steps into his living tomb. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Have the thrill of a lifetime. Oh, madam, you and your little boy will be my guests. Though I will be dust someday, he will have the privilege of telling his grandchildren that he saw the... Louis, step aside. Let the lady and the little boy in. Think of it, my friends. Imagine yourselves without food for one day, two days, three days. Imagine yourselves struggling against the first terrible pangs of hunger. Telegrams come in from all over the world. Berlin, Rome, New York, Paris, Los Angeles. Seeking news of this great attraction, which we're about to see for the small sum of... Here he comes now, ladies and gentlemen, the great Sapolio. Yeah! So hurry, 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 get your tickets and step inside. The greatest fest of the century is about to begin. Chance of a lifetime. So hurry, folks, hurry, get your tickets. See Sapolio, world's champion starving man. Well, Harry, how nice of you to come. Lends a touch of class. Well, we're just on our way to a theater, but we couldn't go on without dropping by to see you open. Yeah, I even bought tickets. Besides, the girls were curious to see what a starving man looked like. They never saw one before. No, I don't imagine they ever have. <laughs> well, I've got to get on with the show, Harry. Thanks again for coming. I'll see you inside. All right, pal. Good luck. No tickets, sir. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I now present to you Henri Sapolio, the greatest enigma of all time. Now, Henri Sapolio, in the presence of these ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to solemnly declare that you allow yourself to be imprisoned in this glass tomb and that you undertake the task of starving for 70 days at your own peril. 
I do so declare. Doctor, would you examine Sepolio now, please? Or would you make room for the doctor, please? Now, ladies and gentlemen, while the doctor is giving Sepolio his final checkup, and to prove there's no deception, I'd like to ask several members of the audience to step up to the tomb, please. Step right up, please. Yeah, you two gentlemen. Madam, come right up, please. I'd like you to examine the bed, examine Sepolio's dressing chamber, his suitcase. As a matter of fact, you may even search Sepolio to see that there's no food of any kind hidden on his person. Go right in, please. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you about the soda water upon which Sepolio will subsist. Swish soda water, ladies and gentlemen, the finest that money can buy. And Park Avenue cigarettes, the starving man's favorite smoke. And last but not least, the Sleep of Beauty bed and mattress upon which Sepolio will slumber during his fast. Thank you. There, you see? No deception. Thank you very much. No deception, whatever. As a matter of fact, standing among you is a gentleman from Scotland Yard. Evening, Inspector. We've asked them here to keep a friendly eye on us. And now, Doctor? He's in perfect condition. Thank you. Now, my friends, the moment you've all been waiting for. With your permission, we will seal Sepolio into his glass tomb. Are you ready, Henri Sepolio? Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sepolio. Good luck. Seal him up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the first nail sealing Sepolio into his glass tomb will be driven by Ivan the Terrible, the strongest Russian in the world today. The white Russian, of course. <laughs> Ivan and his white Russian Cossacks will open a week from tonight at the London Palladium. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the star is on. Do you think he'll make it, dear? Well, we can only hope for the best. Poor oh, want more chocolate. A clout, that's what you'll get. Now turn around and watch the man starve like a good boy. Cigarette, um, doctor. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. You still on the wagon, doctor? Oh, certainly, sir. Most certainly. These old lips of mine taken to water like a duck. Good. Very good show, pal. Now remember, any time you want to come into my stable... Why, Harry, darling, you never told us you had horses. <laughs> May I talk to you for a moment, Mr. Pelham? Oh, sure, Inspector, right in my office. Well, we must be off. We missed the curtain. I'll drop around again, pal. Any time, Harry. Right this way. I hope you didn't mind the free plug. I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. Does he really do it? That's what the man says. And I believe him. Well, I don't know too much about these things. Must have cost you a pretty penny. Was it your money? Does it make any difference? Oh, no, nothing like that. We don't want to solve this case in a hurry, do we? It must be that I've got a curious nature. Like about that check for 250 that Tony Lewis gave you. Like about that letter we found at Raina Maroney's. You know, the one to Lewis. And while it crosses my mind, why you really went to see Raina Maroney? You read all the statements. We were old friends. I'd known her a long time. That's a quaint coincidence. Rourke says the same thing about you and Tony Lewis. It sure is a small world. Marvelous, boss, marvelous. You begin to crowd up again outside. You better go. Great, boss, just great. 
Step inside, ladies and gentlemen. See the starving man. See the starving man shave. He is now shaving. Come right in. Meet Henri Sapolio, the most fabulous man of the day. There's plenty of room inside, ladies and gentlemen. See the starving man shave. What do people write to him about? Food, mostly from cranks, telling him he's got no right to do it. No. Yeah. You know something, Governor? No. Sapolio starves to keep himself alive. He, he thinks if he didn't starve every now and then, he'd die. What? Oh, he's, he's got an eccentric inside. An eccentric inside. How'd it go last night, Pearl? Fine, Harry, fine. Look, I'll wait outside till you're finished. Nonsense. Just throw me the sponge over, will you? Well, pal, what can I do for you? Well, over there. Thank you. Harry, did you ever run into Rena Maroney around town or hear anything about her before the other night? Did you, Harry? It was no secret, yes. She came up to my office one day. Said she'd left the old man. She was broke. She needed a job. Would I help her? Well, what could I do? No, no, since she was a kid. I didn't ask any questions. I got her a job in one of the clubs. Chorus. She gave herself a glamour name. Dolores something. Next thing I hear, she's running around with Tony Lewis. And it dropped out of circulation. Poor Maroney. He worshipped her. Yeah. Harry, I'm going to tell you something. I've known you a long time, and I think you'll understand. Yes, Bill. The other night at the party, Sapolio saw someone going up to her apartment. Whoever it was killed her. Couldn't have been anyone else. And I know Sapolio. He'll worry and fret and rack his brain until, until the flash of that face he saw comes back to him. But I know who it was. That's what's bothering me. Who, Bill? I think it was Tony Lewis. Bathrobe, pal. You going to do anything about it? I don't know. And that bothers me, too. You didn't waste much time, did you? Thanks, Harry. Any time, Pam. All right, friend? You want your honeymoon to last. You keep playing it my way. Oh, and uh, I shall be needing a little money. A lot of little money. Tonight. How much? Five hundred. All right. Peter, quite a spread. 
Where's your mother? I don't know. I came home from school and she wasn't here. I got hungry. Have some. Tastes good. No, thanks. I don't think I feel very well. well. I shouldn't think so. Look what you've eaten. Come on now, off to bed. But my friend at school, he eats goldfish. me around and around, and he kept saying the most awful things. Who was he? I don't know. I ne never saw him before. He, he made me sit in the back. He, he wore a heavy overcoat. What did he look like? I wouldn't know him if he walked in this minute. I was so frightened, I thought I'd die, and, and then I knew I couldn't stand it any longer, so, so I just opened the door and jumped out and, and kept running and running and running. It's all right. It's all right, Jenny. It's all right. Oh, Bill, hold me. Hold me tight. <laughs> he, he, he talked crazy. He kept saying what would happen to Peter if you didn't stay out of things. Oh, Pell, you can't let anything happen. You can't. I don't care what you have to do or where we have to go. Even if we have to leave now, this minute. But don't let anything happen to Peter. Don't. <laughs> How come you called me? How come after what happened you didn't go on and see Tony Lewis yourself? Because if I had, after what happened to my wife, I would have killed him. I see. Look, pal, I was coming over to see you anyway. We picked up Tony Lewis early this morning. He was very dead. Somebody had made him a present of a couple of bullets from his own gun. Tony. And I thought that... Yeah, I know. Seems like we both guessed wrong. Seems we did. Oh, I admit I needled you. I deliberately put you on the spot. I figured it was the only way you'd ever go trying to dig things up, and I'd be there at the right time, and you did. That puts us right back at the start. More questions, no answers. Don't worry, pal. We've made our mistakes. Now it's his turn. I couldn't help it. I didn't know he'd pull a gun. I tried to get it away from him. Next thing he falls against me. Blood all over. I tried All to... right. But why pick up the girl? I thought it was the only way to stop Pelham. He'd do anything for that wife and kid of his. That's right, he will do anything. He'll do anything to find out who took his wife for a ride. I hope you have a good night's sleep tonight, Rock. One thing, I don't have to worry about you talking anymore. <laughs> from Miss Pella. He's not here tonight. I'll take it. Okay.
can you tell me the exact time you came into the tent? I wish it was me and not him, Murray. It's all my fault. If I hadn't taken that one drink, I'd have heard him breaking out. I could have stopped him. Things happen, George. Things happen. I don't understand. He was acting up today, sure, but well, that was all part of the show. The actual cause of death was loss of blood due to the penetration and severance of the jugular vein by fragments of glass. But at the very time he injured himself, he was already dying of strychnine poisoning. Are you sure, doctor? No mistake about it. The clinical picture is perfect. Every symptom there. I wonder, could he have starved for 70 days? Very interesting. Good night. Of course, if only I hadn't taken that... Wait a minute, George. Marie, the doctor says Henri was poisoned. But... Tell me the truth, Mr. Sapolio. Do you know any way he could have got some food? But why? Oh, why should anyone want to kill my Sapolio? At the moment, the question isn't why, but how. Well, once, twice, maybe. Henri made a tiny little cheat. A little piece of ham fat pushed through the letterbox. No bigger than this. But, Val, I swear it to you, Henri did not cheat on this star. I swear it to you. Of course, Marie. George, take her home. It had to be someone who knew about the act. Someone Sapolio knew well enough to take food from. A piece of ham fat, all nice with poison, passed through the letter slot. But what if he wasn't dead? What if we planted a story in the papers that Sapolio tried to crash his way out of the glass tomb, that he's sick? in a coma, and can't be moved. And there's gonna be one worried killer. He's gotta come back to make sure Sapolio doesn't ever come out of that coma. He's gotta come back. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the doctors have examined Sapolio. They say it may be only a matter of a short time before he emerges from his coma. Then and only then will he be able to tell us what happened, why he did it. Be there when the starving man opens his eyes and speaks for the first time. Hurry, get your tickets now. Here's Sapolio speak. Here's Sapolio speak. I want new men in the crowd every day. Never the same ones twice. Make them look like part of the crowd. I don't want them scared off. I don't want anything to look phony. Thanks. Did you... Did you get anything from Rourke yet? Uh, cheers. Getting hungry? Now, keep comfy. You get a nice new nursey now. See you on the next shift. I'm still alive. Be sure to let me know. Oh, thanks, Harry. There's nothing. You're sure now? My doctor's one of the finest specialists. I'd be glad to call him. No, we have the best working on him. They say he'll pull through. It's quiet as a hospital out there. He's earning money, too. I wouldn't be surprised if you fixed this. You know me, Harry. Anything to bait a sucker. Oh, Bertie and Bella were in. They asked me to say hello. Oh, good. Thanks for coming around the way you have, Harry. Makes a guy feel good when things like this happen. Well, I'm as anxious about him as you are. I wonder what made him do it. Hunger, probably. 
opened his eyes for a few seconds this morning, looked as he was going to speak, and then sank back into his coma again. Mm. That's too bad. Sandwiches? Remember, it may be a long time, full style, man speaks again. People may not understand, but well, Marie has to eat. And besides, that's the way Sapolio would have wanted it. Sure, I understand. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the tent. 